Have you been watching The Last Dance on Netflix about the Chicago Bulls in the 90s, specifically Michael Jordan, but also fantastic characters like Dennis Rodman, who's inspired me to start dressing how the hell ever I like again. Look, when you see Dennis Rodman, you think, this guy, what a trickster, what a weird mercurial character expressing himself through, the, through wardrobe and couture. Yeah, couture. I suppose um, The Last Dance is a study of sporting excellence that Michael Jordan, through sheer will and God-given ability, is able to attain incredible heights, literally, but also, you know, also, so I don't know, economically, also culturally, and how these things occur, how one single figure can transform the perspective of a sport and even beyond that. I suppose an interesting subplot of it is the ongoing commercialization of talent like that Michael Jordan at different points was sponsored obviously by Nike but by McDonald's Coca-Cola brands that these days people would query at least in the kind of spaces you and I occupy even though the brands continue to be ubiquitous it's weird isn't it when we sort of say oh is it right for McDonald's to sponsor the Olympics is it okay for Coca-Cola to sponsor the Olympics when their products are let's face it bad for you but never is any regulation deployed. Never does change really occur. I suppose because people say, we don't want the state involved in those kind of things. No one should be regulating that. Freedom of speech, free market. Anytime you see the word free in the name of something, be suspicious that what's actually happening is pretty far from free and is likely quite expensive. I suppose what I got from watching the last dance is a I don't know nothing about basketball, although it seems like it's a you know a pretty simple game. I've been to a Lakers game, I spoke briefly to the man, God rest his soul. Uh, but like uh, you know, what I feel is is that sport is always an interesting forum to look at life because there are clear accepted rules, like I suppose there are in our physical universe. There are metrics and rubrics by which we can evaluate excellence. David Foster Wallace, when talking about sport, is always brilliant because, you know, with art or literature, there is so much subjectivity. I like uh, Nabokov. I like Kafka. I, I, I like uh, the Brontes, you know, like it's, there's no way of saying who is the ultimate champion, but there is with tennis or indeed basketball. And Michael Jordan, um, a mate of mine said that, like, that Obama said of him that he became, Michael Jordan is so good at what he did that he became this synecdoche or synecdoche for being good at something. Like you're the Michael Jordan of motor racing. You're the Michael Jordan of baking. It's interesting to see the kind of work that is required, the kind of responsibility that is required, and the kind of consequences of that level of greatness, that it becomes uh, an unbearable, coruscating pressure on the individual at the centre of it, that obligations are placed upon you, expectations are placed on you, not only within the sport itself, but culturally and ex external to the sport. People expect you to represent certain ideas. I think this is particularly relevant for African American public figures, that there's a sort of an expectation that they ought be involved in civil rights. Is that an expectation that will be placed on everybody in the same way? I'm not sure that it is. It's a fantastic documentary because it tells, it's a sort of tells a historical story about recent events that are just long ago enough for us to forgot, have forgotten about, and particularly if we're, you know, I'm not an expert in basketball, don't know nothing about basketball, but it gives you incredible insight. Even if you're not a fan of it, you will enjoy the soap opera, the drama, and looking to people aspiring to excellence. Scotty Pippin also seems like a very beautiful individual with an incredible voice and a face that's very elegant and enjoyable to look at. It's a, a wonderful documentary. It's an interesting study of power. Let me know what you think of it and uh, if you think my analysis of it has been good but not introduced any spoilers because, well, it's already happened, is not it? It's history. How can you have a spoiler? You can't have it with a historical thing. Oh, guess what? There was a, yeah, the Titanic sank. You know, we all know what happens.